Hello and welcome to Disney Movie Investigations. For those of you that this is the first time watching, welcome. And each week we take a look at a different movie that is featured on Disney Plus, and we take a look at its history, how the movie got made, and well, as well as what other projects it led to within the Disney universe. This week we are looking at the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. And this was a Western comedy that was released in 1979. And stay tuned because we are also going to look at a former Disneyland attraction called Big Thunder Ranch. So sit back and enjoy this week's Disney movie investigation. And if, for those of you that are enjoying these videos, please hit that subscribe button so it can help more people discover this channel, as well as you won't want to miss any of our upcoming case files. So like I said, this week we are taking a look at the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. Uh, so this movie was released on June 29th, 1979, and it was directed by Vincent McKeady, and it was written by Don Tate. And I couldn't find the budget, but the box office return was $20.93 million. So in terms of the cast, we have returning characters Don Knotts, who plays Theodore, and Tim Conway, who plays Amos. Joining the cast in this movie is Kenneth Mars, who plays Marshall Woolley Hillcock. Tim Matheson, who plays Private Jeff Reed. Eliza Davalos, who plays Miss Millie Gaskill. And Richard X. Slattery, who plays Sergeant Slaughter. In terms of the plot, Amos and Theodore are two bumbling outlaws, wannabes from the original Apple Dumpling Gang, and they're back. And they're trying to make it on their own this time. When they arrive at the town, all the, all the sorts of things goes awry. They accidentally subdue the town's legendary lawman, Wooly Bill Hillcock, thus enraging him into tracking them down. They are also accused of bank robbery, and in order to escape, they enlist in the army. But unfortunately, they burn down the fort. Amidst all this, the army is besieged by someone who is stealing all their supplies and doing damage. So there wasn't a lot of production history with this that I could find. Um, I believe this was a quick turnaround in terms of, because the original Apple Dumpling Gang was released in 1975, and then this was released in 1979. So if you think of filming, filming time and the whole process, very quick turnaround from original to sequel. Um, Disney's marketing department, though, did add a sticker to the poster that said all new on it. And I think this was probably done so that they could differentiate the fact that this was an all brand new movie. Because at the time, Disney was part of their vault program is they would re-release movies into the theaters every seven years. So the original film of the Apple Dumpling Gang and the poster for the Apple Dumpling Gang rides, again, are both very similar. So they added this sticker to differentiate and make sure that people were aware that this was a brand new movie. Um, so in terms of my thoughts, the film heavily relies on Tim Conway and um, Don Knotts' as comedy, which I think is strong. However, the story is very weak and does not hold the movie together. It seems like the whole business about the um, the army and the supplies being stolen was very tacked on to try and give it a, a, a consistent thread throughout the movie, but it doesn't hold really all together. Um, the, the plot does seem very disjointed as we're kind of floating from scene to scene to scene, most of it involving uh, Amos and Theodore's different uh, adventures throughout the West. Um, this movie was released at a time when Disney was kind of just releasing movies to try and see what stuck. Um, they weren't uh, necessarily um, having a string of hit movies. So they were just kind of releasing things and they were trying to find their footing. Because um, this was also um, about 12 years after Walt died. So the company was kind of almost like a ship without a rudder. Um, I have a feeling that this movie was originally tended to be the television story, the television series that we talked about um, on the Apple Dumpling Gang video where um, they released a television series right after the, the, the movie. And I think this was originally what this was intended for because it does seem like a lot of mini episodes that are kind of patched together with a very uh, shoe shoestring type plot. So I would say if you choose between the Apple Dumpling Gang and the Apple Dumpling Gang Rides Again, the Apple Dumpling Gang is a much stronger movie in my opinion. Um, so that's pretty much it for the Apple Dumpling Gang Rides Again. Again, there's not much to it, unfortunately. Uh, but I thought I would talk about um, a ranch-type attraction that was in Disneyland called Big Thunder Ranch. Um, 
so Big Thunder Ranch opened on June 22nd, 1986. And this was the idea of Dan Stark, who at the time was the area manager, the supervisor manager of Circle D Ranch. And for those of you that don't know what this is, Circle D Ranch is the Disney's off-site filming ranch, as well as they hold the horses there and um, other special offense, events. They use it a lot for filming. They rent the, the Circle D Ranch out for um, for different studios as well. Like, it's a huge filming location. Um, but Dan thought that this would be a good idea to have a ranch type in Disneyland where they could show off the Disneyland horses and the guests could uh, come and see the other animals as well that Disneyland uses. Uh, CEO at the time, Michael Eisner, and COO, Frank Wells, thought that this was a good idea, and they approved it for Big Thunder Ranch to be built. So the different attractions that were located in Big Thunder Ranch, the first one was the Big Thunder Log Cabin. And this building actually used authentic logs uh, provided by the Rocky Mountain Logging Company. And it was originally intended just to be a walkthrough where guests could look at it and kind of just uh, admire the beauty of a log cabin. But eventually it got turned into a gift shop where they would sell uh, different Western type merchandise, uh, Davy Crockett type stuff, um, as well as Western um, kind of sheriff badges and stuff like that. There was the petting zoo and this was kind of the main attraction where guests could pet the horses. There was goats there, um, different small type animals that the uh, guests could like kind of do as a petting zoo. Unfortunately, it would be replaced by a live show themed to the Hunchback of Notre Dame movie. Uh, the animated movie called Festivals of Fools. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it because we're going to do a separate video on that. But this show ran from June of 1996 and ended in April of 1998. Um, in terms of live entertainment as well, there was Billy Hill and the Hillbillies. And this was a live musical type review uh, show. And they would entertain the guests. Um, and it, this lasted until June 6th of 2014. And then that would eventually move to Knott's Berry Farm after they were done. And then the there was a restaurant as well called Big Thunder Barbecue. And this was an all-you-can-eat barbecue. And what um, there would be big, long tables so you could share with big families and stuff like that. And they would bring uh, ribs and uh, corn and beans and just kind of that Western barbecue meal. Like cornbread was really good. And it was all-you-can-eat, so it was really worth the value. I remember eating there, and it was only... I think like 20 bucks for dinner and like you you never if you left hungry there was a problem um yeah no it was a really good value and then you got live entertainment with the billy hill and the hillbillies as well and then an area that's not seen by guests is this is all the, the area where they would keep the horse stables and as well as little walking trails for the horses um that were used in disneyland so like the on main street the horses that would uh bring up the trolleys and stuff like that this is where they would be kept um, so in 2004, this area was actually given a refurbishment, uh, that was centered around the animated movie Home on the Range, and the log cabin was actually turned into a children's craft area, and then several posters and, uh, signs, and there was actually a wanted poster from Alameda Slim, who was the villain in Home on the Range, and, um, uh, there would be posters and signs all over the place showing the different characters, and then music from the film as well uh, was uh, piped in throughout the, the ranch area as well. And yeah, um, there were seasonal decorations as well. Like they would change the decorations depending on the time of year it was. Uh, so for the summertime roundup is what they called it. There would be summer flowers, eagles, and red, white, and blue motifs. In autumn, they would have flat flowers, carved pumpkins, orange, brown, and yellow motifs. In winter, they would have snow as well as red, green, and blue color motifs. And then finally in spring, they would have spring flowers and baby animals as well as purple, yellow, and green motifs. And then other seasonal events would, uh, would be held in this area as well, um, including holiday-themed shows. Like during um, the 4th of July, they would have Woody's All-American Roundup. Um, and then in Halloween, they have would have Woody's Halloween Roundup. And then at Christmas time, they would have Santa's Reindeer Roundup. Um, so this, uh, this area was very, very popular. However, in 2015 at the D23 Expo, Disney announced that Galaxy's Edge, a Star Wars-themed land, would be headed for both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And uh, on January 11th, 2016, 
Big Thunder Ranch unfortunately closed so construction could be begin on Galaxy's Edge. So yeah, that's Big Thunder Ranch in a nutshell. Uh, I want to thank everyone so much for enjoying these videos, or watching the videos. And then, um, if you have any memories of the Apple Dumpling Gang Rides again, or Big Thunder Ranch, please leave a comment below and share what your favorite memories are of these, these two different Disney uh, attractions. And then next week, we are going to be looking at the back to the world of Disney animation. And we are staying in the 1970s and looking at the classic The Aristocats. So also, as well, please head over to our Facebook page where our Disney uh, bonus poll is up. And this, this month, being February, is all about romance. So we, you have the option of voting on which romance movie you'd like to see featured in the show. The choices are Crazy Rich Asians, Sweet Home Alabama, You Got Mail, 13 Going on 30, and The Proposal. So thank you so much for joining. And again, if you like these videos, please leave a comment, hit the like button, or hit the subscribe button, as every little bit counts. Thank you so much, guys.